Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to crochet this really pretty pocket shawl. I'm calling it the Lavender Fields pocket shawl because the color of yarn is just such a really, really pretty tone of lavender. Now this project is suited for beginners with a bit of experience. So you need to have a good sense of uh, tension, control of tension to do this project. And we do deal with this by using a couple of different crochet hook sizes. Um, but yeah, you do require a little bit of crochet experience for this. But the whole um, garment is made just with single crochets and double crochets. And so we have this really pretty sort of ribbing on the outside edge of the shawl. And then the body of the shawl is made with a double crochet pattern and of course we have the pockets in here as well so let's get started now the supplies you are going to need for this pocket shawl are a number four medium weight yarn and I'm using the Bernat premium yarn and the color is grand purple and this ball is a total of 360 yards and you'll need two balls of this size and you'll need two crochet hooks so i'm using a four millimeter crochet hook and a five and a half millimeter crochet hook and you'll see later on why we're doing the two different sizes then there is a darning needle and some scissors so to begin you'll start with the largest hook the five and a half millimeter crochet hook and you'll begin with a slip knot. And if you're new to crochet, I do have a beginner crochet series and I'll put a link to that below. And you'll also see it come up in the top of the screen here. So create a slip knot, put that on your hook. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a really long chain. So this chain is going to be 60 inches in length, which will stretch out to about 64 inches because of the way the stitch uh, will stretch out. So you can make it longer if you like. The only thing that you need to do is make your chain length an odd number of chains. So I'm going to chain up to 211 chains. So do a chain, you're going to yarn over, bring the yarn through the loop and repeat that and just do chain stitches all the way along. And again, I show this in my beginner crochet series. So I'm going to carry on and do a chain that is 211 stitches in length. And if you want, you can use stitch markers or paper clips to mark your stitches, say every 25 stitches or so to keep track. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end. All right. So imagine that this chain is 211 chains in length. I, I actually realized after the fact after I videotaped this that the focus was completely out and so I couldn't use that piece and I've gone on and filmed the next steps for this so I've just gone ahead and um, chained a small section here just to show you the next step so imagine this is 211 chains long or your odd amount of chains that you were using to create the length of shawl that you like so then you're going to chain one and this is your turning chain now we're going to switch to the four and a half millimeter or the four millimeter crochet hook and we'll be using this for the next five rows and so what we're going to do is when you um, when you crochet back normally you usually crochet into this top loop here of the chain stitch but for every chain that you have there's actually three loops there's your top v loops and then on the back there's a third bump and it's this bump that we're going to be crocheting into uh, on the way back with a single crochet so you have your turning chain here so you don't work into that turn this over so there's the turning chain hold that one turn it over and there's the bump you're going to work into and you just go underneath that one loop and you work into that bump and we'll do a single crochet so bring your yarn through you'll have two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops and then pick up the next bump and just going under the one loop 
and bring your yarn through and pull through two loops doing a single crochet. And so you're going to work a single crochet into that back bump all the way along and using the smaller hook and make sure to switch to this smaller hook because we want these stitches to be quite small. So carry on and I'll see you at the end. Welcome back. So you'll have this really long piece of your first row. So coming to the end here, there's one more here to work into and make sure you get this very last bump of your foundation chain and that completes row one. So now chain one and turn your work. And now we're going to work back along this row one and now you'll work into this top loop of each stitch all the way along. So this is your turning chain. So don't, don't go into that one. Go into the top loop of the next stitch with a single crochet. And then working into this top loop of the next stitch with a single crochet. And my yarn's kind of tangled here and single crochet into the top loop of the next stitch and just work your way all the way along to the end of this row. So here we are coming to the end of row two and I just have three more stitches to go. And this can be a little bit tricky when you come to the end of the row. You might think that's the end of your row, but there's still this one more stitch. And you can always tell because it's the shape of a V. It's kind of going around the corner, but it is a V stitch. So you want to make sure to pick up that last stitch because you want to keep your stitch count on, on track. So chain one and turn your work. And now if you like, you can put a marker here so you know that's the end of row two. And we're going to carry on doing the same pattern back and forth for three more rows. So skip the turning chain and go into the top loop of the, the next stitch there with a single crochet. And you're going to do this all the way back and you're going to repeat that for three more rows. And so coming to the end of row five here, I have a couple of more stitches to go. And now you're going to take out the four millimeter hook and switch back to the five and a half millimeter hook. And so you can see here how this has created a nice ribbing pattern for the outside edge of the, the shawl. So now you will chain two and turn your work or turn your work and chain two. And for this very first row, you want to work these stitches quite loose. So you have your bigger hook, which will help with uh, the stitch to be a looser tension, but you also want to crochet with a looser tension as best as you can. So what we're doing is a double crochet two together cluster. So for the very first stitch, you're going to do a double crochet into this very first stitch at the bottom of your chain two. So yarn over, go under both loops of that first stitch, bring your yarn through, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, go through two loops, yarn over through two loops. And then going into the next stitch, you're going to yarn over and start to do a double crochet, going under both loops of that stitch, Bring the yarn through. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops only. Don't complete this double crochet. So yarn over and begin a double crochet into the next stitch going under both loops. And bring your yarn through. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. You'll have three loops and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is a double crochet two together stitch. So we'll do that again. So yarn over going into the next stitch, always working under both loops. Begin your double crochet, but don't complete it. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring your yarn through. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, there'll be three loops left. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. So we're working the stitch very loosely. 
again going into the next stitch you start your double crochet just work half of that double crochet yarn over go into the next stitch and start your double crochet and pull through two loops and yarn over pull three loops so I just want to show you how this is coming along and you do want to make sure that these top stitches are quite long stitches and it's very loose so you want to check your work at about this point and make sure it's nice and flat if it's pulling in then you're doing this stitch too tight you want it to be very loose just for this first row here so if you're having a hard time with that you can even go up a half a size in a crochet hook maybe go to a six millimeter so keep this first row very loose so here we are coming to the end of this row and if your stitch count is correct you should have two stitches left at the end of the row if you only have one left it's not a big deal i'm a big believer in just trying to modify if there's been a mistake of some sort it just means you're out by a stitch somewhere so if that happens all you need to do is just one double crochet into that last stitch um, i mean you can unravel if you like but it would be a lot of work <laughs> so just do one more of these, this double crochet two together cluster and do that into the last two stitches of that row. And that ends row six, which is the beginning of this pattern. But you could count uh, this row if you like, and you would have 106 of these clusters all together. And that's the hard part over because essentially you're going from 211 stitches to 106 stitches for all intensive purposes. Or so that's why that needed to be really nice and loose and why you use the bigger hook. So now to carry on for row seven, you just chain two and turn your work. And now the pattern will be really easy. So for the very first stitch of this row, and if you have this double crochet here, just one double crochet, then just skip the double crochet and do a double crochet into the first big stitch that you have here. And so, and you do the same thing in this case, you just chain two and work a double crochet into that first stitch and you begin every row in that same way. And now you go into this next stitch here and work a double crochet two together cluster but now you're working this all into the same stitch so do your double crochet but don't complete it start another double crochet into that same stitch and then you'll do that two together double crochet in that uh, stitch and you do want to carry on doing a, a fairly loose stitch here so do another cluster repeating that same double crochet two together cluster and but just going into the one stitch now and uh, instead of working into the two stitches so carry on and I'll see you at the end of this row all right so coming to the end of this row you have your double crochet cluster here and this is your uh, turning stitch, your chain two and double crochet. So there's one more stitch to work into here with your double crochet two together cluster. So make sure to catch that last um, stitch to work your cluster into. And then for the very last stitch, you're actually working into the second chain of your beginning chain two and picking up two stitches, going under two loops of that beginning chain two and you'll work your cluster into that stitch. And it's a bit of a tight stitch to work into, um, but you'll always work your last uh, stitch, your last cluster of each row into that second chain of your turning chain and then chain two and turn your work and this is sort of a long piece that uh, you'll be working with here 
so then you'll work your double crochet into that first stitch there and you'll always begin each row in the same way and then you'll just carry on doing your double crochet two together cluster in each space just like you did for the previous row and that's the pattern repeat so you finish the row in the exact same way that I just showed you and you start the row in the exact same way that I just showed you and you just do this stitch all the way along <laughs> I don't have my glasses on I keep losing my stitches here and so you just repeat that for another 12 rows for a total of 14 rows all together. Welcome back. So I've just come to the end of my first ball of yarn and I have a total of five, seven, eight, almost nine rows of the, the pattern, the double crochet two together stitch. So I'm going to show you how you can join on the yarn from here in two different ways. But before I do that, I just want to mention that while we're making this into a pocket shawl, this would actually be a beautiful pattern for a scarf. And if you wanted to make it the scarf with just one ball of the Bernat premium yarn, which has a total of 360 yards on it, you could indeed do that. And what you'd want to do is you'd have your five rows of single crochet here, and then you would want to do five rows of your pattern because you need like a little bit more than three rows, a good three rows of this to equal five rows of the single crochet. So you would do five rows of your double crochet two together and then you'd go back into doing this uh, ribbing here and I'll show you that later on. So once we have this shawl deep enough we're going to carry on and do this pattern here. So if you want to make it a scarf just stop at row five and then forward to the part of the pattern where we do the ribbing and just use one ball of yarn. And then if you know how to join yarn, you can skip ahead to the 20 minute mark. Um, but I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can join your yarn on. So you can, you can just thread it on as you go. So start your stitch, so yarn over and go in and rather than pulling this yarn through to complete your double crochet, you just bring on the new yarn and you'll pull that through your two stitches as if you're doing your double crochet. And then you'll take this tail here aside and that tail aside and just kind of hold them snug and then carry on with your new yarn that you've just attached. So yarn over, do your double crochet, pull through two loops and pull through the three loops there. And you've just joined your yarn on whoops so you can just carry on I'll just do another double crochet two together cluster here and then you'll see you have the two tail ends here that you can darn in so you can do it that way then the other way you can do it is to do a magic knot and this is where you tie your two yarns together in a very secure knot. So let me see if I can remember how to do this. So one yarn there, one yarn there. I'm going to pull out a little bit more, a little bit more yarn to work with. So there we go. And uh, no, maybe it's this way. I don't think it matters, but because um, you're going to bring your yarn under this side here and over top of the loop and create a square knot and just leave it kind of loose like that. And then on the other side, you want to go in the opposite direction. So in this case, you're going over the yarn from this side, underneath from this side, and then make a square knot in that direction. So you want the knots to be in opposing directions. And then you'll tie this up snug, pull it nice and snug, and then pull this one nice and snug. And then you just pull 
your yarn together like that and you take your scissors and snip your tails really close to the knot making sure to slip, cut the tails not your yarn and just like that there you go and then you can just go in, ahead and crochet that in and it's a very secure knot and that won't let go and that'll just disappear into your work so carry on and I'll see you at row 14 of this pattern repeat. Welcome back. So I've completed 14 rows of the double crochet two together pattern. And now I'm going to go back into doing this ribbing stitch. So you could carry on and make this a deeper shawl if you like. And if you do that, you want to make sure you have an even number of rows of this pattern repeat before you do the ribbing stitch. And also just keep in mind, the deeper the shawl is, the shorter it'll become. So if you want to make it a really deep shawl, then you may want to add um, some length onto it from the beginning. So now we're going to change from the five and a half millimeter crochet hook and go to the four millimeter crochet hook. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see a little better. So now you will chain one and turn your work. Now we're going to work our way back doing a single crochet into the top of the stitches. So you do one single crochet into that first stitch and you're going under both loops. And then into the next stitch, you're going to do two single crochets. And as you do this row, you're going to want to tighten up your tension a little bit. You've probably gotten into a bit of a loose tension habit doing this stitch here. So you want this to be a fairly snug tension. And if you have a hard time with that, you can even go down to three and a half millimeter crochet hook. So again, into the next stitch, you're going to do two single crochets going under both loops and you're going to do that all the way along, two single crochets into each stitch all the way along. Welcome back. So coming to the end of this row, you'll have this last stitch here, which is a double crochet chain two. So into this stitch, you'll just do one single crochet into that last stitch. And then you wanna do a single crochet into the second chain of that beginning chain two from the previous row. And uh, so this will give a nice straight edge to the end of the row. And see that makes it nice and even. And chain one and turn your work. And now you're just going to repeat the same pattern as you did for your beginning five rows of single crochet. So you'll start and you'll you won't go into your turning chain but into the top loop of the first stitch you'll do a single crochet and then do a single crochet into the top loop of the next stitch and you're just going to single crochet into the top of a loop of each stitch all the way along and you'll be doing and at the end of each row, you'll chain one and turn your work. And you're going to repeat this for just three rows now. So go ahead and do three rows of this pattern and I'll see you at the end of that. Welcome back. So just coming to the end of the third row of working into the back loops. So then you'll chain one and turn your work. And now we're going to change this up a little bit and we're actually going to go back to the five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to do this last row a little bit different. And you're, you have your turning chain and you're actually gonna skip the first stitch. So going into the second stitch, the top loop again, you're just going to do a slip stitch and slip stitch into the top loop of each stitch all the way along. So we're not doing single crochets anymore. So we're just slip stitching underneath the top loop of each stitch. 
and I'll just work ahead a little bit here. I want to show you how this is going to look. So I'm just sort of working ahead here. And so you can see here, and uh, I've stitched on this side doing the slip stitch and using the larger crochet hook. And the reason for this is we're trying to achieve the same look as we had on the beginning side. And if you do a full single crochet on this side, it makes the stitch too wide. So what we're doing is we're kind of creating a, a stitch that's between a single cro crochet and a slip stitch using the bigger hook to give sort of a medium size stitch. And where this really shows is actually what will be the front side of the shawl. Uh, so you can see this is our starting side and this is our finishing side. So you have your one ridge here, your second ridge here, and this is the really important piece here where these are nice and even. If this was a single crochet, it would be too wide and it would look uneven. So carry on and slip stitch to the end of this last row. All right, so coming to the end of the final row, and you'll just do a slip stitch into the very last stitch and then chain one to fasten off and just cut a little tail, pull that through and snug that up. And that is the end of the shawl portion of this tutorial. And so you just want to darn in your tail end. So you've got your finishing tail and then your beginning tail. I'll just zoom out here a little bit. So just darn in that end and the beginning end. And the next step, we're going to do the pockets and that'll be in part two. So I'll see you there.